Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I wanted to share with you how you can add a digital window to a shot where there is no window. And this is part two. We're going to be working on the shading and lighting and compositing and rendering, all that fun stuff. In part one, we worked on tracking in the window, so definitely go ahead and check that out if you haven't seen it yet. But hey, let's get into it. Okay, shading. Let's select this guy here and split the view just so we've got a shading editor down here. I'm going to add in a new material and I'm going to start here by deleting our principled shader. Let's just make this a little bit big and let's grab a transparent shader. Let's see where they keep those. Probably in shader, not texture. <laughs> okay, there it is. And also let's grab a translucent and I'm going to go with control and shift and right click and drag in between these two and let go that mixes them together and if you can't do that in your version of blender that just means that you don't have node wrangler enabled and that is completely free and you can just enable it really quickly and it saves you a lot of time in the long run so there's those two nodes let's grab also a glossy node and turn down the roughness all the way and let's mix these two together and then plug that into the surface and if we take a look here Wow, that's exciting, <laughs> it's gray. Let's go over into Cycles here from Eevee, and let's set up a few things about the scene. First of all, in our world settings, that's gonna be doing most of the lighting, and basically what this whole object that we're tracking in is gonna be is just a reflection. And to do that, we need the environment that it's reflecting. So I got a 360 degree photo, and so I'm gonna go into color here and switch this to environment texture. And I'm just going to open that up. Of course, we got to do a little bit of digging to find that, but here it is. And I didn't actually even take this picture on the same day that I took the video, which is not very good practice, but here it is. Cool. All right, so we've got some reflections already happening here. It's not exactly what I was hoping for it to be lined up like. So let's hop real quick into the world here in the shader editor. So here with this texture selected and node wrangler enabled, we can go control T and that will drop in a texture coordinate and a mapping node. Let's take a quick look here. We want this direction of the camera to be the forest over, over here. So let's just see if we can rotate it on the Z axis here. If I turn that up a little bit, you can see it updates. Let's just throw in 90 degrees and see what happens. Okay, wow, that actually works pretty well. Let's go a little bit more. I would say maybe 110 degrees. There we go. Okay, so we're getting some reflections of the woods. Here's where the guy runs from. And I think this is pretty accurate. Cool, so if we take a look at this object here, let's maybe go back into our shader editor of objects and let's adjust it slightly. I'm going to go into the render properties real quick and into film. And if we check transparent here, we get our original background back here. And let's select the camera and just make the background more visible by turning up the opacity. And now, if we select it, we can kind of get a color palette of what these windows are looking like. So let's select this blue here. Maybe we can make our glossy that color as well. Okay, that looks a little bit more like a window. The really nice thing about having other windows right next to it is we can sort of match up the colors a little bit. I think this might be a bit too dark at the moment, so let's turn these up. We're starting to get in the ballpark here. Maybe even a bit more with the glossy. And we can also switch between the translucent and the transparent. That's kind of like the see-throughness of it. So if it's all the way up to transparent, we just get the glossiness. And then if we turn it down to translucent, we get more of a dark blue effect like here. So I think I like something a little bit towards the transparent side. And I think our glossy is actually looking pretty beautiful right now. All right, this is a quick insert here. Just wanted to let you know real quick that the mix between the translucency and the transparency and the mix between those and the glossy here are, it's a very good idea to adjust them, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. And if I actually put in some keyframes here on this mix shader, you can see the values change a little bit depending on the angle. So how much reflectivity I want or how little, and that kind of changes in different parts of the shot. 
just to match up with these other windows a little bit better. Okay, so this looks all right in this freeze frame here, but when we get crazy motion blur shots like this here, you can see we've got something pretty good going on with the motion blur, but you can see there's also some really sharp edges still, and that's just not looking super good. So how we're gonna blend this in is if we go into the render properties here, down into motion blur, and just check that, we're gonna turn the shutter up from 0.5 to a 0.7, and now it still looks sharp. But if we render it out, ah yes, we've got this really nice blurry window pane here. Let's once again maybe turn up these values a little bit more so it's less dark. Here we go. Cool. I think that's matching up fairly well. Let's maybe shift it a little bit towards an aqua hue. Something like going on here. And then maybe brighten that up a bit. All about the little manual adjustments at this phase. But I think that's looking like it will match up pretty well. So let's adjust our render settings real quick here. This doesn't have to be a lot of samples. Let's actually half this. So I'm going to hit slash 2, and that'll divide it by 2 into 64 samples. And let's check adaptive sampling, so we're not taking a bunch of time to render all this transparency here. And now if we render it out, it will go from 5 seconds to about 2.5 seconds, which is pretty nice. If we look in advanced here, let's switch on the changing of the seed per frame, just so we don't have a consistent noise pattern going on. And let's hop into compositing real quick here. This is going to be one of the most simple compositing setups you've ever seen. If we check use nodes, shift A, I'm going to add in a render layers node and a, let's see, output composite node. Those are important. If we just control shift click this node, you can view it. And if we go shift A, we can input a movie clip. Let's open this up to be our shot here. And we've got basically five nodes that we're going to use here. If we go shift A, we'll add in the last one, alpha over. And we can take our window and put that underneath here. And the final image looks like this. All right, so that's looking pretty good. We've got our reflection. It's got its motion blur. If you want this to be a little bit less grainy, we could probably bump up the samples. Maybe I'll go to 80. And when we render this out, it turns black just because we don't have our composite node hooked up. Here we go. But I think that is looking pretty dang good now. We've got our nice reflection, so it doesn't look like there's a giant hole in the window. Cool. All right, here is our finished shot. You can see those reflections are coming in pretty nice, and it does a pretty good job of accomplishing what we wanted. It looks like the camera is going right through a window, and I think this particular shot here is going to add a lot to our final one-take project. But hey, I hope you found this really useful, and if you're interested in learning more about visual effects in Blender, I've actually created a completely free video for you, and in this video I just go over five different techniques that'll help you integrate your CG objects into actual footage. Kind of like what we're doing here. So if that sounds interesting to you, there's a link in the description. Definitely go ahead and pick up a copy. But hey, I'd say we're done here. I hope you have an excellent day, and cheers!